Hi, and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, uh, on the second Sunday after Pentecost. Actually, uh, we are not in McKeesport today. We're actually on location in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm moving down to Atlanta in uh, a couple of months, and I'm just sort of down here uh, preparing for that now. So I want to still bring you a, a service today, though. Um, and so I've opted for morning prayer, which is this wonderful uh, part of the Episcopal tradition that anyone can do anywhere at any time. It's, it's meant to be something that uh, you don't need a priest for, you don't need a deacon for, uh, you can do with your family and friends at any time. It's meant to be done uh, every day, if you would like, as a way of beginning your, your day. Uh, so we're going to follow today along in the booklet we use at St. Stephen's. And I want to show you just how uh, wonderful it can be and how easy it can be to, uh, to do this service wherever you are. So at the very beginning, you have opening sentences. Um, and you can pick whichever one is in your current season. Uh, but we're sort of in what's called ordinary time now. So I'll choose the one at any time at the bottom. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. You'll see here the wording is a bit different. Uh, the, the, we use the word us instead of you. This is meant to be used by anyone at any time. You don't need a priest to, to say this prayer. Uh, moving on. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Then we say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today he would hearken to his voice. And then morning prayer continues with the psalm. Now the psalm for today, is Psalm 116, which we can say together now. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, 
my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walked before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith, even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, everyone is a liar. For what shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. You'll notice some thunder in the background. It is storming here currently in Atlanta. Uh, so if you hear some more thunder, um, it's either God cheering us on or just thunder. All right, we'll continue with the lessons here. Um, as always, we could start with an Old Testament lesson. Um, and so here, let's see, we begin in Genesis 18, a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance and met them, to meet them, and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where's your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, <laughs> After I have grown old, and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah will have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. Continues today. All the way at Genesis 21. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah as he has promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son, Isaac, when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? 
Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's interesting to point out here, I think that uh, the name Isaac actually means he laughs. Excuse me, I also forgot to bring down a tripod, so the video is a little wobbly and all over the place today. Let's continue with the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See if they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out her joy. For the Great One is in the midst of you. In the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue now with the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Then Jesus went all about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out 
and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother, Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper into your belts. No bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or staff. For laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is, it is that is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a brief meditation on this today. As we're reading here, you know, it says, don't go into the land of the Gentiles and, and the Samaritans. Go only to uh, the lost people of Israel. We might read that and think to ourselves, well, that doesn't sound right because Jesus sent them out into the whole world. And that's true later on. However, at that time, it was still uh, in sort of the middle of, of their ministry in the world. And I think it's an important lesson to learn. You know, as we look around the world right now, and we have from international news, we have things pumped in um, to our knowledge from all over the country and all over the world, and we think, oh my gosh, how can anyone deal with all that how can how can i possibly do something about any of this and you really can't right i mean you can't solve the problems of the world but what you can do is go out into the immediate area around you the places that you know the places that people know you the places that you know are near and dear to your heart the places near you where there is need and you know where that need is you know what the need is. And so you go out to those places, those places that you know, and you heal them there. You proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand, that we can have a world that is loving and peaceful and kind and good, in which people are healed of their infirmities and their, the demons of their lives are are set aside, and there is hope for everyone. That is what God calls you to do, to go out into the neighborhoods around you, the places that you know, into your people, and heal them and proclaim the good news. Amen. Let's say together the nice the Apostles' Creed. I apologize, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, that your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let's say together the collect for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Song of Simeon Lord, you have now set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all, to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by, your, by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray that give us such an awareness of your mercies, with truly thankful hearts we show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I hope that uh, you will pray this prayer whenever you feel the need to be connected to God, and that um, you know, wherever you are, you are indeed the body of Christ, the Holy Church of God. Amen.